Greetings, and welcome to the commencement ceremony for the Penn State Law Class of 2023. This is one of the great days of a lifetime for our graduates, and we are pleased to be able to celebrate in person with family and friends. We also welcome the graduates, families, and friends who are joining us remotely via our live stream. While this day is one of joy and celebration, the commencement ceremony itself calls for dignity and decorum. Therefore, we request everyone's cooperation in according this ceremony the quiet respect it deserves. Please take a moment to ensure the ringtone on your cell phone is off. Please also re refrain from moving around the auditorium during the ceremony, including for photos. We have arranged for photos taken of graduates as they walk across the stage when their names are read. Thank you for your cooperation and understanding. I now declare this convocation open. Would everyone please rise for the processional and the singing of the national anthem. Thank you. 
Please remain standing for the national anthem, which will be led by Dale Reck II, JD candidate for the graduating class of 2023. So proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave for the land of the free and the home of the brave. Thank you, Dale, for that terrific rendition. You may be seated. Good morning, everyone. I'd like to welcome you all to the 2023 commencement ceremony of Penn State Law and University Park. It's a great honor to have so many family and friends joining us in person and remotely to celebrate this important milestone. I'd like to extend special thanks to the staff here at Eisenhower for helping us with this important event. Their dedication and professionalism are much appreciated. And now to our graduating class of 2023. Congratulations to each and every one of you on the extraordinary achievement we are celebrating today, your successful completion of a rigorous and demanding program of legal education. Each one of you has faced and endured unusual and extraordinary challenges during the past few years. Each one of you has shown resilience, support for one another, and leadership throughout your time here at University Park. To say your Penn State law experience was unique would be an understatement. We are proud of you and how you navigated so many challenges, and it is with great pleasure that we celebrate and recognize your accomplishments. Today, we're honoring graduates from several different programs at the law school. Our lone graduating SJD student began his education at Penn State Law, earning his LLM before beginning his SJD thesis. He successfully defended his dissertation last fall. Our two MLS students embarked on a new journey as part of Penn State Law's Master of Legal Studies program a graduate level program designed for professionals outside the law. Part of a pioneering cohort, the class of 2023 is only the second to graduate with this degree. Since starting in the fall of 2020, the 114 graduating students in this year's JD class have been impacted significantly by the pandemic. You are the only Penn State law class to have begun your law school experience under brand new pandemic protocols some more burdensome and challenging than others. You navigated through beginning school remotely and then transitioned into a hybrid format as together we all learned how to adjust to social distancing and masking. Nonetheless, you stepped up to lead and support one another in extraordinary ways. While there were probably more Zoom classes and meetings than you care to remember, you still carried on with student organizations, law journals, moot court, mock trial, the life of the law school continued because of your fortitude and perseverance. Since the fall of 2022, 
Our 133 LLM students from over 30 different nations have also taken on unique travel challenges that are still presented by the global pandemic and its differing impact on countries around the world. And so we appreciate your resilience and determination in making your Penn State law experience this year a reality. As we like to say, when you start here at Penn State Law and University Park, you can go anywhere. We can't wait to see where all our graduates, who are both accomplished professionals and impressive human beings, go from here and the amazing ways that they will lead and, to con and contribute to their communities. I'd like to congratulate all the family and friends who are with us today or who are watching the live stream. I know, as each of our graduates also knows, that the love and unfailing support of family and friends were instrumental in helping them get to where they are today. Please join me in thanking the family and friends who are gathered here or celebrating virtually. <laughs> Penn State Law is privileged to have a team of outstanding faculty, administrators, and staff that are deeply committed to serving our students. Their dedication day in and day out has been instrumental to our success. They, like our students, have had to navigate many unusual demands this year. Please join me in thanking faculty, administrators, and staff who have taught and supported our graduates from admission to commencement and beyond, and those who have worked hard to make today special. It's now my pleasure to introduce the Executive Vice President and Provost of the Pennsylvania State University, Dr. Justin Schwartz. As Provost, Dr. Schwartz serves as Penn State's Chief Academic Officer and oversees all academic units within the university's colleges, schools, and campuses, as well as major academic support units. Provost Schwartz previously served as Harold and Inga Marcus, Dean of Penn State's College of Engineering. Prior to joining Penn State, Provost Schwartz was Distinguished Professor and Department Head of Material Science and Engineering at North Carolina State University. Also, Provost Schwartz held various faculty positions at Florida State University. He holds a bachelor's degree in nuclear engineering from the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign and a doctorate in nuclear engineering from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Please join me in welcoming Provost Schwartz. Thank you, Dean Romero. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, graduates, faculty, and welcome family and friends to this wonderful event. It is truly my honor to share this special day with all of you. This is a day of celebration, achievement, and recognition. And this year's celebration feels particularly special. To all of our graduating students, I commend you for your perseverance, your resilience, and your commitment to learning during an educational experience like no other. Take pride in your success and always know how proud we are of you. Everyone, please join me in applauding this exceptional group of Penn State learners. Thank you. Today we honor an impressive group of students that has already contributed enormously to the intellectual and civic life of our university community. You have contributed significantly toward Penn State's work to impact the world and to solve important societal problems. You have provided access to justice, helped people better understand legal issues, and participated in interdisciplinary teams to support entrepreneurship, veterans' health, security, digital innovation, and many other things. All of you made sacrifices and studied long and hard to get to this day. Your spouses, families, and friends have also worked hard, and I join Dean Romero in offering our recognition and appreciation. On behalf of Penn State, thank you, family, friends, faculty, and staff. Graduates, join me in thanking everyone that helped get you to this day. Class of 2023, you have demonstrated that you can help move this nation and the world forward, and your skills and expertise are greatly needed. 
You are ready to take your place in the legal community and to serve with intelligence, integrity, and honor. As you transition to the ranks of Penn State law alumni, you will join a distinguished group of Penn State attorneys, judges, legislatures, scholars, and business leaders. Our hopes for you are very high, and as are our expectations as well. I am confident that you will contribute to the world in many positive ways and that you will continue to make us proud. Congratulations to all of you. Thank you. Dean Romero. Thank you, Dr. Schwartz, and thank you for your strong support of our school. Each year, two students are chosen by their peers to make remarks at commencement. We will hear first from LLM degree candidate Annie Gabriela Molina Ochoa, who was born in the heart of Central America, Honduras. She graduated with honors and obtained a law degree from the National Autonomous University of Honduras in 2018 and is enrolled with the Honduran Bar Association. In her country, she has pursued a career in different government sectors as an attorney. Also, she has had the honor of being a university professor because she believes the future lies in the diversity of younger generations. She understands the importance of helping others navigate the beautiful future which will not be restricted to maps. Please welcome Annie Gabriela Molina Ocho. Hello. Hola. Salam. Ni hao. Salu. Namaste. Hello. Ciao. Sen ben o. Privet. Shalom. Penn State community, my dear fellow graduates, family, friends, faculty, and staff. Uh, we're here all gathered, and I have decided to try to greet you all using different languages at the beginning of this speech to show how diverse is this LLM group. I stand before you today humbled and honored as we celebrate the culmination of this journey <laughs> towards the obtaining of our master's of law degree. As you can imagine, as you can see, it's hard to put into words the range of emotions that we might be feeling right now. Excitement, pride, gratitude, and maybe a hint, of, a hint of sadness as we say goodbye to this chapter of our lives. I remember the first time, the first official meeting that we had as LLM students. We had a picnic at Sunset Park. For many of us, it was the first time far from home, far from the people that we call home, also that day, as we were finishing the event, it started raining. It was an unexpected rain. So things in life work like this. We have special moments as we have unexpected events. As from now on, today and forward, maybe many of us, while maybe watching the rain, we will remember our first shared meal at the Sunset Park. But I bet that we will also remember the day that we celebrated Iftar. Because once again, all of us, we were together, but now, this time, we were together as a family. Because that's what we became in here. That's what we are. 
I believe that we have all worked tirelessly to get here. We should be immensely proud of our achievements. The countless hours of studying, the sleepless nights, the stress of deadlines, long hours working, for many of us, even double shifts. Sometimes, um, but not always, right? And then, just remember that it has, it has all been worth it. One of the many lessons this journey has shown me is that everything you want is on the other side of fear. The people gathered here together are not only graduates of Penn State Law, but we are a statement of the power of diversity, multiculturalism, and interna inter internationalism, sorry. We represent a tapestry of backgrounds, cultures, and experiences that we have woven together to create a vibrant and enriching academy community, but also an international family. I believe that we have also learned the importance of embracing diversity and inclusion. We have all walked the halls side by side, learning from one another, sharing our stories, and challenging the norms that seek to divide us. We have transcended borders, both physical and cultural, and forged bonds that will endure far beyond our time here. We have celebrated our differences, recognizing that our diversity is our strength. We have shattered stereotypes, defying expectations, and proving that our backgrounds do not limit our potential. We have come together, not despite of our differences, but because of them. Our time at Penn State Law has taught us the importance of empathy and compassion, of listening to the stories and experiences of others, and recognizing the inherent value in each and every individual. We have learned that true understanding comes from engaging with perspectives different from our own. As we prepare to leave this institution, let us carry the spirit of diversity and multiculturalism with us. Let us be ambassadors of understanding, advocates for inclusivity, and champions for the rights of all people, regardless their background. In a world that sometimes seems divided, we have the power to bridge gaps and build bridges. We have the power to create a society where diversity is just not tolerated, but celebrated. We have the power to shape the future, the values, the contributions of every individual, regardless their race, their ethnicity, religion, gender, and nationality. So, my fellow graduates, let us go forth with hearts full of compassion minds open to new ideas, and a commitment to creating a more just and inclusive world. Together, we can make a difference, one step at a time. As we move forward from this day, let us not forget the responsibility that comes with the knowledge that we have gained. Think of how life comes in faces. Never let your light Die. Focus on the good and never settle. Never hide who you are and grow at your own pace. Let us not forget where we come from, our roots, our countries, our cultures, our beliefs, because that's who we are. Let us appreciate the people who have helped us to reach to this point. Our families, our friends and loved ones, 
that have been our pillars of support through this journey. They have stood by us through the tough times, encouraged us during moments of self-doubt, and celebrated our success with us. This is how we express our gratitude to them for their unwavering support and love. Finally, let us take a moment to appreciate this moment. Today marks the end of one journey and the beginning of another. Let us cherish the memories that we have made, the friendships that we have formed, and the knowledge that we have gained. Let us look back on this day with fondness and pride, knowing that we have achieved something truly special. Congratulations, my fellow graduates. Remember, we are. Thank you, Annie, for those inspiring and insightful remarks. It's now my distinct honor and privilege to introduce our special guest speaker, Zachary Breckheisen. Zachary is a graduate cum laude of the Penn State Law Class of 2012 and currently a partner at global law firm Jones Day. As a partner at Jones Day, Breckheisen focuses his practice on mergers and acquisitions with experience in representing public and private companies as well as private equity firms and strategic transactions. He is ranked by Chambers USA and has advised clients who range from the Fortune 500 to local family-owned enterprises. As a mergers and acquisitions attorney, he brings a dedication to client service and an intensity of effort that he attributes to his training as a law student at Penn State Law. In addition to counseling clients, Breckheisen serves as a co-chair of the Jones Day LGBTQ plus affinity group and serves on the firm's Pittsburgh office recruiting committee, as well as the diversity inclusion and advancement committee. Breckheisen is a member of the board of directors of the Penn State Law Alumni Society and the Penn State Law Development Council. Since his graduation, he has dedicated significant time and resources to Penn State Law and its students with a focus on helping students to prepare to practice on day one of their legal careers. He's been recognized over the years by both the law school and the greater university for his efforts. He's the recipient of the 2017 Penn State Law Distinguished Alumni Award, the 2019 Penn State Law Diversity Award for Leadership in the Legal Profession, and the 2020 Penn State University Alumni Achievement Award. In 2022, Breckheisen was proud to endow the Lavender Law and Career Support Fund to help more Penn State Law students connect with LGBTQ plus friendly employers who reflect the law school's commitment to diversity and inclusion in the legal industry. While Breckheisen has had a successful legal career, his original career path started as a young engineer in his native North Carolina. He has a Bachelor of Science in Construction Engineering and Management from North Carolina State University. Prior to attending Penn State Law, he worked as a project engineer at a Raleigh-based engineering consulting firm where he focused on serving clients in the electrical utility industry. Now please join me in welcoming a truly accomplished Penn State Law alumnus, attorney, and dedicated champion of public service, Zachary Breckheisen. Thank you, Dean Romero. Uh, Annie, I just want to say that was an amazing speech. I can just sit down now. I'm done. Everything's been said. Absolutely great. Thank you again. So thanks again, Dean Romero. Since he's introducing me, I have to tell everyone before I get to my remarks, my favorite Dean Romero story, which stays to me to this day. I mean, most of you who have had him before know he's been teaching first year constitutional law since before most people in here have been born. But so I, I had him a few years ago as a, as a first year law student. You know, I, I, I walk in and I know he's a tough professor, right? You know, he, he, uh, uh, you know, he'll make you do your work. So I always prepped for his class, I always read the cases, got prepared. 
Um, and so I think, I forgot what we were talking about, what the constitutional issue was that one day, but I came in, I knew I was ready, everything was highlighted up and down, knew the cases, knew the holdings, everything like that. So I sit, and you know, Dean Romero, he, he calls, he says, Mr. Breckeisen, what was the holding in this case? What's the rationale? What, what did the court say? I'm like, okay, okay, here we go. You know, jump in, tell them, you know, okay, well, here's what they held. Here was their rationale. This was the basis for it. And, you know, Dean Romero, hey, he goes over to the window and he kind of looks out <laughs> like this. And he's like thinking very deeply about all these wonderful things I'm saying, right? Very, and he says, yes, yes, that's absolutely right, Mr. Breckeisen. And that, that's, that is exactly what the court said. I'm like, oh, yes, all right, got it, I can unclench, relax, like, okay, got it, he's going to move on to somebody else. Turns from the window and says, but allow me to push you if I can, Mr. Breckeisen. <laughs> and anyone who has been in class with this man knows you're about to look really dumb for the next 10 minutes. After that, I turned into just a pile of blabbering jello, basically, and he would not move on to anybody else. <laughs> So despite all my prep, he, he still got me and reminded me that I had a lot more to learn. But, um, but it, it really means a lot, Dean Romero, thank you to, to be introduced by you today uh, and be standing here coming as that blubbering pile of jello as a 1L to, uh, to speaking to you today. Um, so jumping in, you know, thank you, Dean Romero, my fellow Wolfpacker, uh, NC State, Provost Schwartz, Members of the Board of Advisors, distinguished faculty, alumni, guests, and the class of 2023. I will just start out by saying what, you know, what most of you are probably wondering. You know, it's commencement, all the graduates have come in, you know, the pomp and circumstance, we're all dressed like Christopher Columbus. You know, usually we sit down and you, you hear from some learned jurist, some person who's been practicing for 40 or 50 years about all the wonderful things about the majesty of the law, right? Uh, so you're wondering, like, who the hell is this guy then? Why is he here? So I definitely got some grades, but I am not wise and learned by any stretch. No, I'm just a lawyer. I'm a partner at a corporate law firm, as Dean Romero said. I work in Pittsburgh. Uh, you know, I, I've not changed the world. I'm, I'm honestly just now embarking on sort of the prime of my professional life. Now, Dean Romero asked me to come speak to this group today because I was sitting right where you all were only about a decade or so ago. For all the new JDs in the room here, you know, I'm talking to you as someone who will probably be of the level of maybe your first boss once you get out and start practicing, either a junior partner or a senior prosecutor or manager or director elsewhere. And so it's from that perspective I want to speak to you today. Not to give you broad platitudes about the majesty of the law. You know, your professors have taken care of that for three years. But to celebrate you and your accomplishments and hopefully impart a little advice from a Penn State law graduate who's walked in your shoes before and is still in the trenches practicing today. Now, while I've only had the opportunity to meet a few of you in person, I do feel as if I know the class of 2023. I first walked through the Katz Law Building doors back in the fall of 2009. For those of you who remember, 2009, you know, not only about a, what, roughly a year beforehand, the international financial sector had fallen apart. Foreclosures were rampant, people were being kicked out of their houses, in droves, banks were failing. People thought the economy and even the world as we knew it was crumbling. Against this backdrop, I left a good job and decided to go to law school, to come here, to Penn State Law. And despite the seismic shifts that were occurring in the world around us and in the legal industry at the time, I still had faith that the world would need us, that they would need attorneys, that people would need advocates. The class of 2023 first entered the doors of the Katz building virtually in the fall of 2020. A mere eight months earlier, we remember the world literally shut down for the first time in history in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. People were dying, hospitals were bursting at the seams, businesses were crumbling, and there was a lot of fear at the time. Once again, people thought the economy and the world as we knew it was crumbling. And against that backdrop, amid all that uncertainty and fear, the class of 2023 JDs here still decided to come to law school. Despite the seismic shifts occurring in the world around you, you still had faith in the power of this profession. But that's probably where our similarities start to diverge. For the first time in history, you began a law school tenure not by perusing the stacks in the law library, but as Dean Romero said, by logging into a Zoom screen. You managed to interact, learn, represent clients, 
create a community here remotely. Even today, with the benefit of hindsight, I don't know how you did it. Surviving law school in normal times was difficult and stressful enough, but to do it in such extraordinary times is nothing short of a miracle on your part. It's a testament to your dedication and hard work that you're sitting here today. Now, the JD class of 2023 came to Penn State Law with the highest combined GPA and LSAT in the school's history. That's right, you guys are a lot smarter than I ever will be. We've got teachers, army officers, college athletes. 15% of you, like me, were first-time lawyers, or first-generation yeah, first lawyers. You came to us from 33 different U.S. states and four other countries. As Dean Romero remarked, the massive LLM and SJD classes were joined by lawyers, judges, professors, civil servants, and NGO leaders from 34 countries, from Bangladesh to Belgium, and Pakistan to Peru, and everywhere in between. An amazing array of practitioners from around the world coming here to the middle of nowhere in Pennsylvania to take that next step in your career development. Many of you in the JD class after graduation are going on into private practice, at firms, large and small. We have future officers in the JAG Corps of the Army, the Air Force, the Navy, and the Marines. We have future prosecutors, clerks, and patent attorneys. An extraordinary class of graduating that's graduating at an extraordinary time. Now, you are entering the legal market at a time of immense change. And with those changes come opportunities. Artificial intelligence is going to have a huge effect on the legal industry as we know it, and the economy and the world as we know it as well. It will change the way that people and businesses require legal services, and it will inevitably change the way that we provide them. When I started practicing in 2012, which is not that long ago, words like e-discovery and AI review of documents were largely used as catch buzzwords that we'd throw out so you know, the clients would think we were cutting edge and, and sort of knew what we were doing, right? We were tech savvy. But today, they're literally the standards by which we practice. It's not been that long ago. That can be a scary thing, but it's also a time of opportunity for those willing to put in the work think critically, and find new ways to adapt. The senior partners and even people of my vintage, sort of the older millennial crowd, we will be looking to the next generation of lawyers to help us adapt and to help us find new and innovative ways to practice law. You are, for better or worse, the COVID generation, as Dean Romero reminded us. You adapted and succeeded despite the difficulties. We need your help. Speak up when you begin practicing. What may seem like common sense to you today may be a promise, a, a practice, or a process, or a tool that we'll eventually use to improve how we do our jobs and how we practice law. Now, the pandemic accelerated the trend in, biz, in the business and legal worlds towards remote working and reliance on that technology for communication and interaction. That shift has done great things in the market. It's allowed people to work from home, it's allowed people to work remotely around the world and make connections that you know, we didn't think we could a few years ago. It's breathed life into communities that are outside the traditional commercial urban centers that lawyers typically and traditionally worked in. It's removed that grueling commute to the office and back each day, right? But at the same time, it's also accelerated our trend towards isolation and withdrawal from others. The US Surgeon General just a couple weeks ago declared loneliness and isolation to be a national epidemic. In the UK, they even have a minister of loneliness. That didn't just appear out of nowhere. We can't just blame Instagram for that. While we adapt to these new realities, there's gonna be this pull to withdraw further, a tendency to say, why, why do I need to go in the office when I can just do this from my couch? To learn and start in your career, you need to show up. This job is hard. This profession is hard. You're, in your first years of practicing, you're going to be pushed to your limit. The only thing worse than that is having to do it alone. We're humans. We instinctively yearn for human interaction, face-to-face -face interaction, the ability to shake somebody's hand and look them in the eye. Communications technology is doing amazing things, as we said, but there's still no substitute for getting together in a room to hash out a deal or the feel of getting in front of the jury and speaking to them face-to-face during your closing arguments.
And I remember as a junior associate, I would go into the partner's office for negotiations and client calls. All, you know, all the lawyers we'd be around, huddled around the speakerphone. Again, showing the old, old days. But uh, I, I learned more probably in that hour listening to what that team was saying while the phone was on mute than I would learn in an entire day of sitting in on Zoom meetings. Saying, oh, sorry, uh, you go first. No, you go first. Oh, no, Karen, you're on mute. Please, you know, we, we can't hear you. When you're in front of that room, when you're in that room, you see the sausage making. You see the side hud the huddles, the frank talk, the arguments that people are parsing out in their mind before they make. You see the decision making in real time. As a new lawyer, you're constantly going to be learning, almost through osmosis. You learn the skills that you can't just read in a book or an article. Those experienced attorneys didn't get to where they are today by reading it in a book. They did it by doing it. So make an effort to show up, to be present as much as you can. Even if you're in a remote working environment, try to find ways to get in. Meet your colleagues, see them, work collaboratively. Be the one in the room when the decisions are being made. Now, as a new attorney, you're also coming out at a unique point in your career. You've just been trained as a lawyer, but beyond that, you're a blank slate, right? You didn't come out of law school being hardwired into a special, you know, a specialty of law. You don't come out of this place as an expert in the substantive areas of law that you might be interested in. You can take your career and your, your, your practice literally anywhere you want from here. That's a refreshing thing, right? But it can also be a little scary as you start to wade into a job where you feel like you know literally nothing. When I was a law student, I, was ta I would talk to lawyers and I would usually ask, you know, you do these informational interviews, right? And you ask, well, how did you get into your profession? You know, kind of one of those stock questions. But I was honestly struck by the number of lawyers who told me, like, well, I was originally doing X, uh, and it was like, okay. But then, you know, a partner came to me one day and said, hey, I need your help to start doing Y, right? And, you know, the person was like, well, I don't know anything about that. I've never done it before. I honestly don't even have time, but I like this partner. So I decided to go ahead and work for him. And then all of a sudden, fast forward 20 years later, and that's what I do now. Permanently, I'm an, I'm an expert in it. You know, I, I didn't go into law school thinking I was going to be doing mergers and acquisitions. I didn't even know that that's what I'd be doing when I was sitting where you guys are today at graduation. I, I mean, honestly, I still don't even know what I want to do when I grow up at this point. But I went through a number of iterations before I settled on what I do now. First as a patent attorney, a regulatory lawyer, then a construction litigator. Then finally, I gravitated to doing M&A, something I knew nothing about at the time. I had the opportunity, the opportunity to try it out. And it so happened I really liked the people. You know, I liked the partner who reached out to me, right? Um, and I liked the practice group. And it really aligned with my sort of natural skill set of deal making, consensus building. And I liked the detail of technical writing. A lot of things I never really had experienced in three years of law school. And now I'm a transactional lawyer. My litigation, my litigator friends like to joke with me, like, you corporate guys are even real lawyers. And, you know, I, I take that as a badge of honor, of, of honor, honestly. I like the fact that I get to spend a lot of time working with business people, with accountants, with engineers, with, uh, you know, bankers, in addition to just working with lawyers. I'd probably go absolutely insane if I had to sit and research and write briefs and prepare sort of, you know, legal arguments for the court. I mean, the most legal research I do, it's called Google, folks. So again, that, that's a plug for those of you who hate researching. Come to the dark side. Come be a, come be a corporate lawyer. We don't research anything. So my advice to this group is, you know, please be open to new experiences and working in new areas. Be willing to say yes to assignments that you may find new or daunting or scary at the time. Eventually, you will find your fit, that area where you have a passion and all of a sudden, you wake up and realize that it's a decade later, it's already flown by, and you'll be the one asking the junior attorney to come try out your practice. Now, I want to close with a few words about this school, Penn State Law, Pennsylvania State University Dickinson School of Law at University Park. And I spoke a little earlier about how this class persevered, and you heard from Dean Romero about how this class persevered and was able to succeed despite all the COVID-19 lockdowns. Again, it was brand new. Nobody knew what they were doing at the time, right? That wouldn't have been possible without the immense work and dedication from the Penn State Law staff and faculty up here. These people who have dedicated their lives and careers and the lives of their families to help you 
help set you up for success and allow you to pursue your passions. That sense of community, that sense of purpose and that family up here at University Park, that's a strength that's been built up here over 15 years. That wasn't something that even COVID-19 could break. It's the, there is a reason why people call this Happy Valley, right? There's a reason why over 100,000 people come up to this town every weekend in the fall. There's a reason why I can bump into a complete stranger on the other side of the world wearing a Penn State hat, and we have that shared moment and that close connection. This place is special. It is not just brick and mortar of the Cats Building or the Lion Shrine. I mentioned earlier how important close in-person interaction and collaboration is to our profession. The future of the legal industry is going to be dependent upon collaboration with professionals in business, in technology, in finance, in healthcare. Walk out the door of this auditorium and where are you? Take a look around. We're surrounded by a top ranked engineering, engineering, business and science programs. You're sitting in the heart of a tier one research institution that's at the forefront of new developments in biosciences, renewable energy, pharmaceuticals, sustainable farming, air and water preservation, you name it. We have an amazing slate of professors and professionals at this school who rival the faculty at any Big Ten law school out there. We have clinics, which you all worked in, doing real work, representing real clients and helping individuals in central Pennsylvania and elsewhere. You should be proud as hell to say you are a Penn State lawyer and that you went to Penn State law. You are joining an active and passionate alumni network who are equally proud to call ourselves Penn State lawyers. We will be there to support you on your way out of here. Nothing that happens in the future will change that in any way. Be proud of your school. Be proud of your degree. Be proud of your colleagues here today. And most of all, be proud of yourself. You are all Penn State lawyers after today. Now get out there and do us proud. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you, Zachary, for those inspiring remarks. We are honored by your presence here with us today. Now we turn to the Board of Trustees, the legal corporate body of the Pennsylvania State University. This is the body that, by our charter, is given final responsibility for the governance, welfare, and all other interests pertaining to the university. The Board of Trustees is represented here today by Trustee Alvin DeLevy. Trustee DeLevy was elected to the Board of Trustees by delegates of the alumni effective July 1, 2021. He is an attorney and founder of the law offices of Alvin DeLevy with a location in State College. In 1973, Penn State alumnus, he earned a bachelor's degree in political science and went on to learn, uh, earn a law degree from the Villanova University Charles Widger School of Law. He is vice chairman of the Penn State Board of Trustees Legal and Compliance Committee. We are very pleased that he is with us today. Trustee DeLevy will now authorize the conferring of degrees on behalf of the Penn State Board of Trustees. Good morning, honored graduates, friends, and family, and thank you, Provost Schwartz. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, I offer my congratulations to the Penn State class of 2023, your family and friends, both in person, as well as those joining us remotely. It's particularly meaningful for me to be here today because it was 50 years ago, pretty long time, that I became an alumni of Penn State. Being an alumni of Penn State is important. As a Penn State alumni, you have a say in the future of the direction of this university. All Penn State alumni may participate in the nomination and election process of alumni elected members of our Board of Trustees. This is one of the many opportunities you will have throughout your lives to remain active members of this Penn State community. 
that we love, and please stay engaged. Now, I just want to take a moment to speak about something that was really the most important part of my legal career as a litigator for 46 years. In addition to staying involved with Penn State, you will have another important opportunity. As you embark on your journey as lawyers, please, please remember and do not forget, do not ever forget, you have an opportunity to provide pro bono services to those who cannot afford an attorney or also in situations where you can provide pro bono services to an organization or organizations that has a mission you feel greatly about. Please consider providing pro bono services throughout your career, now as you embark on it and throughout your career. Whether you are in private practice as an individual, in a small firm, a large firm, in the public or private sector, or wherever on this earth where you may practice. As a practicing litigator, I have learned providing pro bono services was indeed the most fulfilling thing I ever did as an attorney. And now I turn to my official duty, Provost Schwartz, by virtue of the authority vested in me and as approved by the Board of Trustees of the Pennsylvania State University, you are authorized to confer on each of these graduates the degree earned and as certified by the appropriate college faculty and dean. Thank you and good luck. Thank you, Trustee DeLevy. Who's ready to graduate? <laughs> All right. Thank you, Dean Romero. Thank you, faculty of Penn State Law, for bringing forward these worthy candidates. We will now turn to the conferral of degrees. For each degree recipient, a slide will be displayed on the video screen behind the stage. Graduates will walk across the stage when recognized. We will begin with the degree of Master of Legal Studies. Will the candidates for the degree of Master of Legal Studies please rise? The Master of Legal Studies program is designed for students and professionals for whom legal knowledge can help advance their careers. The program introduces students to US jurisprudence and affords them the opportunity to focus on areas of the law of particular interest or which have relevance to their broader career goals. Upon the recommendation of the faculty and upon the authorization of the University Board of Trustees, I hereby admit each of you to the degree of Master of Legal Studies. Congratulations. We now turn to the Doctor of Juridical Science. Will the candidate for the degree of Doctor of Juridical Science please rise? The Doctor of Juridical Science degree is intended for lawyers practicing outside the United States who seek advanced and specialized knowledge in a particular area of law. Established in 2012, this rigorous program offers students with outstanding academic and professional credentials the opportunity to pursue sustained, supervised study and research and writing that leads to the production of a dissertation that makes an original and valuable contribution to legal scholarship. It requires steadfast dedication and a commitment to excellence. Upon the recommendation of the faculty and upon the authorization of the University Board of Trustees, I hereby admit you to the degree of Doctor of Juridical Science. Congratulations. <laughs> Next, we turn to the degree of Master of Laws. Will the candidates for the degree of Master of Laws please rise? In 1968, 
a Master of Laws program in comparative law designed for international students was adopted, and it continues to this day as a mainstay of the Penn State Law Academic Program. The LLM program, a one-year course of study which integrates LLM students into the legal program offered to our JD students, is designed to provide foreign-trained lawyers a strong foundation in U.S. law. Since its inception, students from 95 jurisdictions have earned the LLM degree and have gone on to make significant national and international contributions. Upon the recommendation of the faculty and upon the authorization of the University Board of Trustees, I hereby admit each of you to the degree of Master of Laws. Congratulations. Please be seated. Next, we turn to the degree of Juris Doctor. Will the candidates for the degree of Juris Doctor please rise? The Juris Doctor degree program is a three-year, six-semester course of study through which students are taught fundamental principles of law in a wide variety of core and advanced topics and learn to engage in legal analysis, reasoning, and problem solving, to perform legal research, to communicate effectively orally and in writing regarding legal matters, to recognize and resolve ethical issues, and to discharge professional responsibilities within the legal system. Upon the recommendation of the faculty and upon the authorization of the University Board of Trustees, I hereby admit each of you to the degree of Juris Doctor. Congratulations. Please be seated. We will now recognize each of these degree recipients by name. Dean Matthews will announce each name beginning with the Master of Legal Studies. When I call your name, please come forward. Joy Ann Ashley. Natalie Mansell. I will now read the name of the recipient of the degree of Doctor of Juridical Science. When I call your name, please come forward. Pranav Menem. I will now read the name of each recipient of the degree of Master of Laws. When I, when I call your name, please come forward. Nana Ana Abaka Khan. Okay. Katamjan Abdulayev. Mahsujan Ablaev Leev <laughs> Sara Azevedo Garzon <laughs> AC Waitam Item <laughs> Ismoelbeck Ibrahim Ogli Akbarov. <laughs> Sardor Ahmedov. <laughs> Bernara Kabibulevna Ahmedova.
Ali Hamdan S.M. Al-Hababi. Hamad Mohammed H.A. Al-Albabi. <laughs> Lina Khalid S. Albahu. <laughs> Ahmed Salman H. Al Alfaibi. Faisal Fahad A. Al Kanan. Al Kanan. <laughs> Asma Abdullah Al Omran. <laughs> Abdullah Abdul Rahman M. Al Oda. Sara Abdul Rahman A. Al Sheri <laughs> Dahar Talak R. Al Sulami <laughs> Vakar Anjum Isabella Arboleda Arango. <laughs> Natalia Arroyo Bernal. <laughs> Mohammed Abdullah Asif. Donia Ayari <laughs> Abdul Rahman Abdullah H. Azuni <laughs> Solongo Patajav. Aidos Baiselbaev <laughs> Davsuk Patsuri <laughs> Kulan Bayersekan Mukbold, Pyre Sekan Mariana Betancourt Hurtado Luca Marie Bolognini Alina Borodina Nasandelgar Borya Nicole Marie Reynes Stewart Dinishi Salmya Bulat Bela Diniti Satya Bulat Bela Khamit John, Tulkin, Ugly, Burif. John, Jairo, Kabarkas, Perokal. Marianes, Castillo, Espinosa.
Chang Yujun. Cheng Du Yuan. Cheng Ji Xuan. Alexander Luran Ching Zhang. Cindy Cheria. Ugo Chukwu, Samuel Chukuma. Zhang Daijin. Nilot Paul Dotto. Isis Marzela De La Rosa Ayaz. Vitis de Gutis. Himari Desai. Mohammed Amin Deeb. Ding Wei. Shivani Sandeep Kumar Doshi. Daniel Kusi Dufour. Maria Camila Duque Gomez. Riti Devedi. Benderia Inga Maglon. Sharia Farhat. Umi John Altabayevich Faizule Liev. Fung Lo. Beyond Dorch, Gun Tumor. John Bernhard Geving. Matea Jitnes. Serene Gismi. Gui Jo. Celine Hegel. Luis Guillermo Hernandez Asensio. <laughs> Stefan Sondan Abednego Kutabarat. <laughs> Jamshidbek Ibrahimov. De la Frus, Oybek, Kizi, Istamova, Faizulayeva. Tamar, Javahishvili. Hishvili. 
und Jerby. Victor Anayochukwu Jona. Ria Monica Naveen Kalra. Ellen Marie Eichelan Carlson. Hayot. Ba Khrodirovic Halikov. <laughs> Gazel Khan. <laughs> Elbek Hasanov. Alima Hospayar. <laughs> Zinat Kirbasheva. <laughs> Heliana Koma Lasari. <laughs> Yosra Kurda. Osman uh, Kuyabi. <laughs> Griselda Kuniawan. <laughs> Sofia Valentina Linero Murcia. Lua Zianzhu. Jonathan Mafra Sena de Santana. Norekon Boberkon Ugli Malikov. Omatbek. Marip Jonov. <laughs> Nozima Begim, Olugbek Kizi, Mashrabova. <laughs> Alexandra Maria Mendoza Zapata. Abu Said Fazladin Ugli Mirzaev <laughs> Ani Gabriela Molina Ochoa <laughs> Ayun Horat Mungtus Bishreld Miegmar. <laughs> Brina Carolina Nunez Marin. <laughs> Jonathan Jesus Mariano Ordinola Diaz. Daniela Carolina Palacio Avia. <laughs> Laura Paula Paropena. <laughs> Manev Narishbai Patel. <laughs> Jose. Carlos Perez Castellanos. Aziza Rajabova.
Durbeck, Bretimberg, Petiv. Alibek, Rebmetov. Aidana, Aida Bekovna, Razova. Jennifer, Gabriela, Reyes, Bermudez. Gabriela Rodriguez Carmona. <laughs> Julian Andres Rojas Carmago. <laughs> Valerie Andrea Rosales San Juan. Nargiza Safarova. Ayan Sakosyov. Daniela Salazar Savira. Sai Vignesh Shankar. <laughs> Nuruddin Akhtam Ugli Sharmatov. <laughs> Anushka Singh. Ahorbeck Sodikov. <laughs> Jamie E. Stausi. <laughs> Sharhior Ulash Ugli Tojiboyev. Katarina Kagigavas Torp. <laughs> Yvonne Arlet Torres Benel. <laughs> Prasina Shibrabwa Mbue. Chenedu Henry Uchenya. <laughs> Jarin Tasnim Urbi. <laughs> Barzin Vahidov. <laughs> Huang Guanru. Huang Hui Yu Huang Xian Tong Huang Zhu Wei Santiago Weil Silva Wu Yi Xuan <laughs> 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 
Isai Jabez Corridor. Khadija Yija Yila. Salam Zaidi. I will now read the names of each recipient of the degree of Juris Doctor. When I When I call your name, please come forward. Mohammed M. Ahmed. Uliwatomi N. Ajimatan Rareje. Alicia Armstrong. Amanda Megan Atkinson. Max Ofterheide. Oberon William Bartley. Victoria Michelle Bates. Nicole R. Bennett. Patrick Thomas Burton. <laughs> Caitlin O. Boswell. Carly M. Bowen. Matthias D. Bowman. Rebecca C. Brady. Leilani Sue Ann Brown. Rebecca L. Bryant. Jordan Burdick. Amanda Elizabeth Carrizales. Katie L. Kaufman. Jacob H. Conklin. Megan N. Cavone. Kelson L. Crawford. Victoria Eliana Navarrete Crimes. Chelsea Curran. Michael M. Curry. Mary E. Davis.
Gabrielle M. Delanois. Ryan John Deacon. Yu Ding. Christopher J. Dingler. Ronald Dorval. Megan Marie Dougherty. Clayton Samuel Buchanan Dubin. Sean Duffy. Kendall Savage Dunn. Brianna R. Egan. Chad T. Erb. Hunter J. Fedora. Alyssa Danielle Fenoy. <laughs> Carrie Renee Field. <laughs> Russell Benjamin Phillip. Matthew Finnegan. <laughs> Nina Catherine Franco. <laughs> Megan K. Geis. Max Giuliano. Sean Aaron Hay. Alexander C. Heron. Michael P. Houlihan. Nathaniel J. Huss. Gracie T. Ennis. Kenzie Claire Jackson. Alexa D. Jacoma. Albert Gordon Jones the Fourth. Ashley Brooke Jones. William. M. Cockless. Aaron Jane Carmen. K. 
Caroline Kelly. Adam Garrison Kleiber. Braden E. Knoll. Benjamin N. Kester. John Luke Legrand. Thomas F. Long. Nina Abaiva Lord. Veronica Lynch. William Marcus Manson. Nicole Marone. Brittany Martinez. Connor Joseph McAfee. Cameron Lawrence McKeever. Paul Joseph McNeil. Ryan C. McWeeny. Michelle Darlene Miles. Megan Alyssa Minnick. Corin Moon. Kylie Mutusami. Selena Elaine Moran. Layla Tarek Anwar Mukhtar. Christian J. Myers. Luke William Nelson. Jamirka Nusi. Rafael Ogbona Amu. Kimberly D. Orndorff. Robert Barry Owen O'Sullivan II. Eugenia Y. Oyung. Jeremiah 
J. Parlock. <laughs> Ileana Polanco Cavazos. <laughs> Jedediah D. Riesenberg. Kira M. Ritter. Sarah N. Rivad. Dale Frederick Reck II. Catherine E. Riles. Joshua A. Sauer. Jennifer K. Schmieder. Daniel Libertad Serrano. Alexander H. Smith. Olivia Smith. Talia Danielle Sturkey. <laughs> Megan Rian Thomas. <laughs> Alexandra Gabriela Varela. <laughs> Maria F. Vajerano. <laughs> Karina Verk. <laughs> Samson D. Wisenen. Hunter S. Walker. Samantha Joe Walter. Jessica Nicole Warwick. Taylor D. Washington. Andrew Waxman. Michael J. Werman. Bridget K. Woodward. Woodford, Woodford. <laughs> Peyton Ann Woodward. Christopher Wright. Tanner. Michael Yawitz. Green Yim.
Garrett David Young. Chase Youngman. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my distinct honor and pleasure to present to you the Penn State Law graduating class of 2023. You may be seated. And now on behalf of the Penn State Alumni Association, I'm delighted to welcome each member of the class of 2023 into one of the largest, most effective alumni networks on the face of the earth. We urge you during this promising and challenging next year to stay connected to Penn State law, to the university, and to other Penn Staters, and the Alumni Association will help you do that through a graduation gift to each of you, a one-year free membership in the Penn State Alumni Association. Your membership keeps you in touch with Penn State and connects you with more than 300 alumni groups throughout the United States and around the world, and includes automatic membership in the Penn State Alumni Society. So congratulations on your induction into the Penn State Alumni Association and the Penn State Law Alumni Society. I'm now happy to introduce Chase Youngman, a member of the JD class of 2023, who was selected by his classmates to deliver remarks today. Originally from Castle Rock, Colorado, Chase attended the University of Colorado at Boulder, where he studied finance, accounting, and management operations. After graduating from the University of Colorado, Chase worked for PepsiCo in Denver. At Penn State Law, Chase has been a part of the Entrepreneurship Assistance Clinic, treasurer of the Student Bar Association, president of the Sports and Entertainment Law Society, and he served as Law Lion Ambassador and a student worker in the Penn State Law Admissions Office. After law school, he will join Wicker Smith, O'Hara, McCoy, and Ford, PA, in its Atlanta office as an associate attorney. Please welcome Chase Youngman. All right, now that everyone's uh, walked across the stage, it'll be a quick 45-minute speech from me. <clears throat> and uh, just to get this right out of the way, I know everyone's probably wondering, and no, this speech was not written by ChatGPT. <laughs> Classmates, faculty, and esteemed guests, today we come together to celebrate the closure of what has been a crazy three years. Well, Perhaps I shouldn't say closure, I believe the preferred nomenclature these days is reunification instead. In, o in honor of our now expansive... <laughs> in honor of our now expansive knowledge of linguistic technicalities, I want to take a moment to thank our professors for their tireless dedication to our education. They have inspired us with their knowledge, challenged us with their assignments, but most importantly, let us off easy when we completely whiffed on those dreaded cold calls. I'd also like to thank the staff in our law school who have guided and enriched our experiences beginning the day that we received our admissions letter. Your commitment to our success, not only as lawyers, but as people, has not gone unnoticed or unappreciated. Finally, I'd like to take a moment to recognize the friends and family who have supported us through this journey. Whether it was a phone call to offer words of encouragement, a care package of snacks during finals, 
or a shoulder to cry on after a particularly tough class. They have always been there for us and we appreciate it. Let's give them a round of applause. Now I'd like to speak to those of you here sitting with me, excited to officially add Esquire at the end of all of your email signatures. <laughs> Class of 2023, we stand at the precipice of our legal careers, and as we look forward to new challenges and hopefully bigger paychecks, I hope that you will each take a moment to think about what inspired you to take on the challenge of law school. Maybe it was a desire for justice, a passion for helping others, or maybe it was simply a love of arguing, we won't judge. But whatever our motivation was, we all share one thing in common, an intense disdain for writing memos about unreasonable noise. <laughs> That's like an inside joke for the class. In all seriousness, we are now equipped with the tools to make a difference in the world. We have the power to stand up for what is right, to fight for those who otherwise who would not have a voice, and to advocate for justice in a world that desperately needs it. We, perhaps more than any Penn State class before us, understand the discomfort and challenges presented by a country experiencing vast change. Our class should receive special commendation for doubling down on the miserable experiences of a pandemic and law school all in one go. But as I look around, I'm also reminded that we are a class of resilience. A class that takes challenges heads on, head on, is never afraid to speak our minds. We are a class that will thrive in the face of adversity and bring about positive change, I have no doubt. Already I have seen our class make these impacts in our community. Every day for the last three years, I've been inspired by the stories I hear of my classmates. I see them serving families without legal representation, immigrants in need of assistance, Pennsylvania farmers drafting their first solar leases, and blooming entrepreneurs. I've seen classmates conduct impactful scholarship and create publications that have changed the way that le the legal field thinks. So when I say that this class of 2023 will do amazing things, I'm not speaking out of some vague hope based on unfounded optimism, but a confidence rooted in an established track record of exemplary work. We graduate today as a class facing uncertainty, even uncertainty in the future of our law school and a class that will never be immortalized in a composite photo taken one L year. But even if the law school closes tomorrow, I am certain that we will not be a class or law school that is forgotten. The legacy of Penn State law will carry on through our work, the communities we impact, and the lives we change every day. I want to thank each and every one of you for making these past few years unforgettable. For the laughter, tears, and shares of hating the rules against perpetuity, it's been an honor to grow aside you. Now as we go our separate ways, I'd like to leave you all with a quote from President George W. Bush, who once said, to those of you who are graduating this afternoon with high honors, awards, and distinctions, I say, well done. And as I like to tell the C students, you too can be president of the United States. <laughs>Thank you, Chase, for, for those thoughtful remarks and your, <laughs> and your contributions to our school. That was sincere. It's a tradition at Penn State commencements and many other Penn State events to sing the alma mater. We'll be led by Dale Reck, member of the class, JD class of 2023. The words are printed on the inside of the front cover of your program, so please stand and join us in singing the special tribute to dear old state.
are dear with thee, all with thee, all with thee. When we stood at childhood's gate, shapeless in the hands of fate, thou didst mold us dear old state, dear old state, dear old state. May no act of ours bring shame to one heart that loves thy name. May our lives but swell thy fame, dear old state, dear old state. Thank you, and please be seated. Well, that concludes our commencement for the class of 2023. We ask that the guests please remain seated until the recessional of the official party and the faculty is complete. As the Dean of Penn State Law, I hereby declare this convocation closed. Mm-hmm.